you have an upcoming interview or maybe an important meeting in Microsoft Teams and you've never used Teams or maybe it's been a long time and you're a bit rusty, well, keep watching because today I'm going to help you get ready for that interview or meeting. Now, I'm not going to go over things like what you should say or what you should wear, but I will walk you through all the steps for getting your camera, your microphone, and Microsoft Teams experience set up so that you'll look your best and make a great first impression. Now, the first thing that you're probably wondering is whether you need to install something, whether you need to install Microsoft Teams on your PC or Mac, whether you need an account to join in to that call in Microsoft Teams or Office 365. Well, the good news is you don't need to install anything and you don't need an Office 365 or Microsoft Teams account. You can just join right from the link that you have in your email right now nothing else. We're going to use the browser in this case and the normal Teams meeting invite that you were sent with no sign in, no apps required. So I'm going to pause though for a second because if you're not frequently using things like Microsoft Teams or Zoom for online and remote meetings, you'll probably want to spend some time setting up your camera and your microphone so that you don't make a bad impression. Now, if you're already a pro and maybe you're using another platform like Zoom to join your online meetings, you can skip ahead to that section. I'll make sure to define all the chapters in the video and we'll rejoin when we get to the Microsoft Teams pre-join meeting steps. All right, so if you stuck around, then let's get your camera set up first and get your microphone ready so you look and sound your best. So since you're watching this from YouTube, you've probably seen a lot of really terrible videos and a lot of good videos. Let's try to get you into the good video camp. So I'll start by navigating to the built-in camera app in Windows 10 or 11, it's the same. You can find it by opening start and just typing camera. There it is. So when I open that, it's going to give me the default camera for the device. And I've switched to the audio and the camera feed from the device, as you can tell. So right now, if you're using a laptop with its integrated camera, you probably look something like this. And I'm just using here a very budget Surface Go 3 Windows PC and its onboard microphone, not my expensive studio camera and microphone. If you have more than one camera connected, you can use this button up here to switch in between them. And by the way, if you're using a Mac, you can use the Photo Booth app in the same way that I'm using the camera app in Windows here. And this process is the same if you're not using your laptop's built-in camera, but instead have a separate webcam with an integrated or separate microphone. Okay, so the first step you really wanna do is take care of that angle, the angle that the laptop was firing up at you. And the way to do that is really by propping up your laptop or making sure that your camera is at eye level. And that also helps from an audio perspective too. Now, the things that you can do, for example, for that, you can use a laptop riser. There are lots of those on Amazon that you can buy that will get your laptop kind of propped up. You can also put it on a stack of books or shoe boxes or other boxes to get it up. And no one who's on that interview on the other end is gonna see how you've propped up your laptop. And so you don't have to worry about that. Just make sure that the laptop, it doesn't wobble or it doesn't sway and it doesn't fall off during the interview. So that's important. One thing that they might see though is what's behind you in terms of your camera view, as you can see here, but I'm also gonna show you some tips inside of Microsoft Teams to be able to address that if you've got a messy background that you can't avoid and how you can clean that up using the software itself. Now, the next thing you're probably gonna to wanna to do is take care of your lighting. So facing a window with natural light will give you really good results and it's free depending on the time of day that you have, the results will vary. Usually you don't want to sit uh, with a window that's behind you because that will often make your face look too dark because the camera needs to compensate for all the light coming from behind you. This is what's called being backlit. In most cases, it just doesn't look good, even if you have the best view in the world. Now, if you don't have a spot with natural light or don't want to risk changes in the light levels from the window, maybe it's at dawn or dusk or you have clouds overhead, then you'll want to create diffused light for your face. So one option is if you have an aimable desk lamp, you can point that light really brightly at the wall in front of you, and that's going to bounce off the wall and give you nice diffused light. A second option is to point the light at your face and use some white paper or cloth to diffuse that light a bit so that the light isn't too bright, doesn't blow you up, make you look too hot, as we'd say in photography. And if you don't have either option and need to buy something for this, then 
a great solution is a USB powered ring light that tends to work pretty well. And you can find those typically for anywhere between 20 and $30 for the inexpensive ones. A lot of times they can also be delivered the same or the next day, depending on where you're located and how close the shipment facilities from Amazon or other retailers are to you. One more note though about that ring light, if you do wear glasses, then you may want to diffuse the ring light as well using a paper or piece of white cloth, for example. Since these uh, tend to come with a stand, you can also kind of play with its uh, angle and its height because if it's positioned uh, in the wrong way, it's gonna actually produce a white ring on your glasses on one side or the other or both, and that will be visible to the people on the other side of the camera. Okay, so now with your laptop in position, all your lights set up, in my case, I've got a couple of lights firing uh, towards me. Now everything is set up uh, in terms of lighting and the camera and the sound roughly um, how you'll hear it. Now, one thing that you'll do if this meeting or this interview is very important to you, it's probably gonna be a good idea to record a minute or two of yourself talking to the camera just to make sure everything looks and sounds pretty good. You can do that right from here in the Windows app just by clicking on the take video icon and it will actually record the video for you so you can review that later. Now let's shift gears to sound. So from a sound perspective, the good news is the microphone is probably in the right position in terms of the way that your mouth is firing because you're looking right at the camera. And the other good news is that even if you don't have a great kind of studio quality microphone, well, Microsoft Teams, for example, and also Zoom will take care of that for you. So one thing I love about Teams is the way that it can actually take care of loud sounds and audio. Like for example, if you have a vacuum, in the other room or there's a lawnmower outside. The great news there is that people won't even hear that on their end using just the noise suppression that's built into Microsoft Teams. One good way to demonstrate this that we've done before on the Teams team is showing a snack bag. So here I will move it and you can hear that it sounds very crunchy and very terrible. Now let me show you what that sounds like in Microsoft Teams. Just so you can hear what it sounds like with the noise suppression turned on from Microsoft Teams. Okay, so just to be clear, I've been on lots of different Teams calls with lawnmowers, vacuum cleaners, even chainsaws cutting down trees behind me. And the nice thing is with the built-in noise suppression, nobody hears a thing on the other end of that. They just hear the sound of your voice. Okay, so now we're ready to look at the controls in Microsoft Teams, and we'll just uh, use the web version in this case right from the browser. So again, there is absolutely nothing to install. Now, if you've skipped ahead, this is probably where you want to rejoin the conversation back where the Teams guidance comes in. So I'm gonna start though, before I get to Teams, with the Teams meeting invite open, and I'm using Gmail here on purpose to show that I'm not using a Teams work or school account or any other Microsoft account in this case. And you can see there's a meeting link uh, to join the meeting at the top and it has everything you need to join the meeting contained in that link. And there's also a set of meeting ID and passcode uh, strings that you can use. Normally you won't need these uh, if you use the link above it, but you can use this link to actually add the meeting ID and passcode if you want. You know, this one also, as you can see below, has call-in information, which can sometimes be helpful, for example, if you've got spotty internet or your internet connection drops for some reason, it'll let you dial into the voice track of the meeting via telephone. In this case, I'll go ahead and use the easiest option and just click join the meeting in my browser. And now that's gonna ask for permission to use my camera and microphone. So I'll go ahead and approve that. Then once everything loads, this is what's called the meeting pre-join screen. Now don't worry, the interviewer in this case won't see that you're logged in or that I'm logged in yet in this case. So by the way, even if you wanna try this out, maybe days or hours before your call, you can do that. The main thing is, is that you don't click the join now button. If you do, in that case, the meeting organizer or the interviewer uh, will get a notification that someone is in the virtual lobby for the meeting if it's set up that way, or they might actually see that the meeting has started if the lobby bypass has been set up for the meeting. I'll show you those things in a second. Now, the first thing you need to do while you're here is type your name. This is how the interviewer or other people on the call will see your name. In many cases, your first name will probably be fine, but for more formal meetings, you might wanna add your salutation if you're a doctor, for example, and your surname, 
or your pronoun preferences. So I'll go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the camera as I explain the different options that you can see here on the screen. There we go. And so up here on the right hand side, you can see the different audio sources. So computer audio is like it sounds. It's the audio that's coming in this case from my laptop. And I can also do uh, the settings here for microphone gain and turn the microphone on or off. If I want to join muted, for example, with the microphone not on immediately, I can do that from right here. And then I can use phone audio. For example, if I want to join the audio track through the phone, but also get a visual on shared screens or share my camera, I can do that right here from phone audio. Or I can use don't use audio, which is great. For example, if you're in a meeting room and there are lots of other people, maybe a meeting room device like a Teams room device, or maybe you're joining as a pair of people and you have two different laptops, someone sitting next to you and you want to use their speaker and their microphone as the means to join into the interview. Maybe it's an interview for a team or a few people. That way you can use the don't use audio. All right, so now let's take care of, let's say I've got a messy background. In my case, hopefully it doesn't look too messy to you, but I'll go ahead and do what's called background filters. So here I can actually choose from a few different options. So I can, I can use blur. So the blurring of the screen, there we go. will actually make everything look a bit diffuse in the background, kind of like a low aperture lens on a camera. If you're a photographer, you'll know what I'm talking about. That gives you that blurry background bokeh effect uh, if you want that. And I like this one here, but there are lots of other options, but this is another great option in terms of background replacements. It gives you a nice clean background. You probably want a background that suits the meeting that you're in so that the background kind of meets the expectations of your interviewer. So you probably don't want to be too playful on certain meetings, but maybe this might be a little bit too conservative for other meetings. So you've got all these different options here that you can choose from, you know, and, and basically choose the right one that makes sense for your specific call. All right, so now when I go ahead, um, I feel good about my background settings. One last thing I'll show you before I move on is this devices gear here. So this is the device settings. So this lets you actually change up if you want to change your audio devices. Um, for example, if you've got some, some other custom devices hooked up like a webcam or a microphone, you can also change your speaker, your microphone. If you're, say, wearing a headset, you can change the, the speaker to the headset. And then you have this noise suppression control here. And this has auto, which I recommend, or you can use high or low or turn it off. I'm going to leave it on auto. And then you've got your, your video settings. So if you've got multiple cameras, you can actually choose the camera that you want to use there. And the last thing I'll point out is the mirror my video settings. So right now it's like a mirror. So if I raise up my left hand in this case, you can see it's on the left hand side of the screen and the right hand on the right side of the screen. That's not how the person on the other end of the call will see it. So if I switch it, you'll see exactly what the other person will see on the other end of the call, which is great if you've got, for example, text or anything in the background and you want to make sure that all of that looks right and is readable, then you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to mirror my video because I prefer that. And now with everything ready, I'll go ahead and join my call. Okay, so once I join the call, the thing that the person will see on the other end on their side is an admit button. So usually meetings will be set up with what's called a lobby and the interviewer in this case, or the meeting organizer will have the option to admit uh, external parties into the call once they see them there. So I'll go ahead and do that under the context here of Megan. And then you'll see on both screens, basically both your interviewer as well as your screen uh, on their side will be more or less full framed. Now that's when you've got a couple of different options. So you can, you can speak obviously with the video running or if you want to, um, and in a lot of cases it will make sense, you'll want to actually share content. So for example, if you want to share from even the browser, you can go ahead and share the entire edge tab, a window, or an entire screen. Now I recommend sharing a tab or a window because then you won't inadvertently share something that you don't want to be sharing. So if I go into, for example, the edge tab and I say, let's, let's share maybe the join meeting that we saw earlier. If I share that out, what's going to happen is that will give me a full screen of that tab. So this could be a resume. This could be something like 
your CV or your um, or maybe some work that you want to show that you've done in the past. The great thing is if you want to, you can actually go back and hit control tab and get to the meeting call that you're on. And if, for example, you don't need to scroll or interact with that, maybe it is your resume or a website, you can stay in eye contact with the interviewer as you share that content out. So you have that option to, to do that. And then when you're done, when you want to be done sharing, you can either hit stop sharing here from the tab itself or the content that you're sharing or the window, or you can stop sharing from the app. And then once the interview is over, all you have to do is make sure that you hit the leave button here and that will leave the call. Okay, so those are all the steps you'll need to take in order to set yourself up to make a great impression on your next Microsoft Teams interview or your next Microsoft Teams meeting. Now I just covered the technical aspects, so I didn't cover things like what to wear, what to say. Those are all things that you can research and I encourage you to research those with all the hundreds of videos that are on YouTube right now to prepare the content of the meeting itself and kind of what you wear and those types of things. But we wanted to focus on just the technical aspects of how you get set up with your camera, your lights, your microphone, and of course, how to use Microsoft Teams. And by the way, if you need help choosing a webcam for your next interview or Teams meeting, be sure to check out the playlist on the screen. If you like the video, be sure to give me a like, subscribe to my channel for more tips like this and also great hardware reviews and work from home tips. And most importantly, good luck with your interview. Let me know how it went in the comments below if you got set up just how you wanted to be. And thanks so much for watching.